Now time for the Movistar women's team preview for 2022. They have now with AVDB retiring, certainly the a sort of undisputed best GC rider in women's cycling, Annemiek van Fluten, who, although she did have a crash at the end of last year and is recovering from that. In 2021, they had seven World Tour wins. They were the second-ranked team in the UCR ranking. AVV was the best-ranked rider in Women's World Tour, which you'll have heard Sebastian Zoué talk about, you know, the flaws in that system uh, in, in that interview. But, I think a pretty good year, Benji. A, a really good year. Like, ADD did well. Emma Norsgaard came through. They got some contributions as well from, like, Leah Thomas as well. Yeah, obviously, if you've got Von Vleut and you won victories, and she brought that, that RVV victory is certainly one of them. But even in the Hill Classic, she got very close and perhaps was disappointed, I would expect, being third, fourth, and second in all three of them, Amstel, Flesh, and Liege. So... I think that's a bit of a bummer on her end, but she sprung back quite uh, instantly with Ed Valenciana winning those Olympics. Obviously not that special for the team that she's on, but for her, it's definitely good. Do you think that they... Do you think that they expect more victories at top level from a rider like this? I think... I know it sounds crazy, but I kind of think yes. Weird, huh? They kind of would be expecting maybe one more World Tour one-day race. I think the reason is that the Giro Rosa was skipped for the Olympics, and that won't happen in 2022. But obviously, Tour de France Femme comes up. So I think they'll have more victories with her in 2022. Spoilers, sorry. Emma Knowles got as well. She was very consistent at the start of the year, and like second in Brugge de Pana, ninth at Gent Wevelhem, second at Scheldepreis, second at Omloop. But she didn't actually break through for... A world tour win. Just, I mean, the Giro Rosa was technically not world tour. She did win a stage there. Um, sixth at Paru Bay. She's 22 years old, looking very good. Uh, Emma Norsgaard. So a lot to be happy about. And the transfers. Yeah. I mean, with SD Works, Benji, it's, somewhat, it's literally impossible to be first ranked virtually. So they did the best they could coming second, I think. I think so as well. I think they did well with what they had and obviously if you have one of the best riders in the team then you're going to get the victories necessary to do a potential second spot the question is are they going to be able to keep that up in 2022 when other teams are trying to build a stronger top level squad and then we look at the transfers like you mentioned in their team they're having Leah Thomas go to Trek Segafredo we spoke about her on the Trek pod she's a strong domestique among versatile areas Alba Teruel she's going to Biscaya was also a relatively good domestique not necessarily in the races that Van Vleuten was on though so she was more of that secondary level races and the transfers that come in are in my opinion two good ones but I'm very hyped about Alene Sierra joining this squad and that is because we've been speaking about her here or there throughout the season. And she ended up winning Trivale Varzine and got second in Giro dell'Emilia this year. She's getting victories in the likes of a Toscana, but also in that, uh, was it Ardeja, I think? Yes. I think she got close on the stage where Grace Brown won in Burgos. She got in the second group, I think, first. Yes, indeed, fourth in that stage. She won one of those Spanish races ahead of the likes of Van Vleuten, so she can offer options in those races as well, like Navarra Women's Elite Classics, for example. My question is, where can she fit in the team in the World Tour level races? And then we look at what she did at the Hill Classics, 46, 42nd, and 37, and I'm like, I was expecting a tiny bit more by Sierra in those races. And then I look at Brabant Sapel 15, that's better. Can't be able to 15th. And I'm like, she can get over cobbles. And then I'm like, okay, cobbles are hills. And like, yeah, that, that six at Shell Price ahead of Sarah Roy. Like, it's, I don't know, it, it's interesting, given that they have AVV, who for LBL, Flesh, La Course, uh, wherever that sits in the calendar for San Sebastian, maybe not San Sebastian, but for the big, big hilly one-day races, mm-hmm. you have AVV, that's your leader, makes sense. I think you have Sierra at other races. Maybe she's an attacking option in Hen Favelhem if it's an aggressive race on the hills, Benji, and I still expect Norsgaard to make it, frankly. 
Uh, but yeah, you look at you look at that shoulder price. Second Norse guard, six Sierra. It's a hard, she's a hard rider to pit, to fit in. But I would send her to the other races and the other newer women's world tour races that AVV can't go to all of them. She can pick up stage wins. I think that's how they should use her. I think so as well. And we're looking at a Brabant as a place where she can fit in in the calendar where I would not be sending the likes of a uh, Van Vleuten, for example. Obviously, that's a one one race, but there are some other examples throughout the season that I would definitely look at. I'm like, like the Ronde van Drenthe. I wouldn't be sending Van Vleuten to the Ronde van Drenthe personally, although it's a Dutch race. But I'm also like, Sierra, yeah, is that the place to go either? I don't know. Uh, I think if you look at the other transfer, She's very talented, Sarah Gigante, but she's had some issues recently. Do you know the uh, specific injuries or illness that she had? Yeah, so Gigante, this came out at the end of last year. She's in recovery from a bout of myopericarditis, uh, which is like she had a heart scare. I'm not a doctor, so I don't understand the the true ins and outs of it. Um, But yeah, she's a very talented rider. She's 21 years old. She's actually with that new agency, the one that sits under Anthony Joshua. It's branding 258 Protégé uh, with Leo Hader, I think. Anyway, she won the Australian ITT Champs. She won the Santos Festival of Cycling this year, 2020 as, as well. She won the ITT Champs, um, I think, when there were more. Uh, when Grace Brown was there, she beat her by nine seconds. So she's super talented, GC focus rider. Uh, but yeah, just even eleven the Olympic Games ITT this year. But yeah, it seemed to be a bit off. And uh, I think a good pickup for Movistar because she's just uh, that she definitely can learn from AVV. We heard Sebastian Zoué in the interview was very high on her, and that seems to be what he thinks as well. Is that she can learn a lot from AVV. But well, what do you think from her, Ben? Because I think if she's performing. She will be the mountain domestique for AVV in the tour. I think she certainly fits that bill. But then we look at her results in the classics this year, where she got 11 in Dwarsdorf London, for example. And I'm like, are we going to put her in that kind of territory of race, territory of racing as well to support Van Vleuten? And I think it all depends on her recovery of that injury. Is she going to be top level already at the Cobble Classics? Or is that going to be a bit later? And as a consequence, we can't say which races that we would send her to, I would expect. Yeah, it's exactly. It's, I think it's a wait and see as well when she'll be, she'll be back to racing. But now to pick their, their teams, Cobble Classics, Benji, I'm not going to send – I don't think AVV should do all of them. It's a heavier yeah. schedule. She's got to do TDFF. I'm gonna I'm gonna go Norsgaard for the early ones like Samin, Omlope, etc., and then bring AVV in for RVV. Yeah, I would also next to that look at an Alder Bionich for the likes of a uh, Roubaix, for example. She got 21st in Paris Roubaix Thumb in 2021, so that's a good result to uh, to look at because uh, yeah, you can uh, help out a leader in that aspect. Now next to that, I would probably look at. Elena Eric as a rider that can be supportive in cobble races. She didn't have the craziest results, but she rode them and wasn't terrible. 31st at Omlop, 28th at Lissa Man. She was 80th roughly at the RVV. So it's more of a domestique role than a, a leader role, quite certainly. When it comes to the likes of a, a filler for the team, not necessarily filler, but quite supportive. Barbara Quarishi is something I would expect as a rider that I would potentially put in this squad as well although like she's also not the most consistent on these terrains she dnf at rvv but i was looking at the 60s plays at oxyclean for example we got to look at those results already to fill the team and then i then i'm like okay the support isn't really there but if you've got someone like annemiek van vleuten do you need more and the rider that we should not forget is emma norsgaard of course and she's the one i'm looking at to be a co-leader with avv and spread out And depending on what race it is, either could be the leader. I would be looking at Van Vleuten for RVV while I look at Norsgaard to be the rider for Jan Wevelgem. Well, if a Van Vleuten goes to Jan Wevelgem, then she can be the attacking option for the squad. I would not send AVV to an Omlop, for example. That's where I'd send Norsgaard. What, sorry? No, AVV. AVV is not doing Roubaix. Not allowed. Okay. Too much of a crash risk for the tour. Uh, I don't think it's necessary either because you've got Norsgaard for it. So I agree. And I think that with 
the situation of having both Norsgaard and AVV, you can spread them out quite perfectly throughout those races and see which ones we're going at. But then I uh, I also said earlier, I think that Sierra also yeah, was, was a question her. mark for Cobbles and Hills. Would you choose Cobbles over Hills? I would, I would send her and focus on Cobbles. And if she can't get away or it's not so hard to race, now you have a lead out for Norsgaard, a very strong lead out, and or should be at least. Uh, so... Yes, I think I would pair her more with Norsgaard and then have AVV as clear leader in, in RVV uh, and maybe a couple of other races is how I'd I do it differently. Approach. I think I put Sierra in the likes of a Bravo and Sapel in those races and I'd put her in all those Spanish races, like that name I cannot pronounce, Nefu, whatever, <laughs> Keen Classic Luke, Race, Navarra Women's Nefa- Classic. Luke, 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 yes, that one. <laughs> <laughs> but. You're uh, right. Yeah, that's my take on that. When it comes to the hills, I think Von Vleuten is obviously leader after the things she done this year, three top fives at those races. If she finds the lucky attack that gets her away, then she can win one of those races quite certainly. But her competition is pretty big in the name of SD works. Obviously, on Von der Bregen not being there, it can be an extra option for her to do better in those races. When it comes to support, Alarud is someone I'm looking at. I recall her attacking on Lara Dut this year in LBL together with Peter Plodwig, vaguely remember that. Uh, Sarah Martin as support was very good at helping her out at San Sebastian, helping Van Vleuten out at San Sebastian, and the likes of uh, a. Then I'm looking at support teams surrounding that. Are we thinking about a Gonzalez, perhaps? Alicia Gonzalez, I think, uh, as a support for Van Vleuten as well. I think she did some of these hilly classics, but I think it were the Spanish ones. Elena Erich did some. She did yeah. she did a couple, but not all. I would send Sierra as well. Um to help AVV to set her up. I would to launch those attacks. So AVV's not doing them from in front of the Peloton with no one setting it up. I'd I'd have her in the three seven nine role. If Gigante is in form gobbles or hills classics. Hills. Okay. That's what I go for. Uh Jura Rosa Benji. This is a tricky one. Two weeks before the TDFF, it's Starts on the first day of the men's tour. I w- wouldn't be sending AVV. It's I just wouldn't. <laughs> it's too risky. Yep. Um, I'd maybe I wouldn't send Norsgaard either. Frankly, I'd give the other riders a chance. Yeah, I would as well. Guarishi as a outsider sprinter for that race, perhaps a Sierra as well. Uh, An Alarud as perhaps the climbing aspect. She was I think twenty even the Judo Rosa this year or is that something i'm making up it's the she, 20th she got was good fifth time trials. oh yeah you're right so i don't know isn't she support can she get a chance to Giro Rosa and still be a support domestique at the tour de france fan i think so i think he, yeah i think that's how that's how i'd approach it i'd give her a chance there and then have at the tdff if Gigante's on form her Norsgaard obviously for the sprint at the start yeah. Alarud AVV Sarah Martin for the mountains and yeah I think it's a pretty damn good squad and they yeah, got the favourite so well. to see certainly um, so in general the Girosa and TDFF team does not need to be the same for this team and I would indeed choose that aspect like we mentioned Von Vleut and Tour de France Femme the others can try and get an opportunity at Girosa but still be supportive at the Tour de France Femme and Northgard also doing the Tour de France Femme Uh Obviously, depending on what form Gigante is in at that point, I wouldn't actually know which one to send her to yet. So I guess that's something we can decide later on. But I think those are the main names I would send to those races personally. they they got to be so happy, Movistar, with their investment in this team. Like, yeah, you get the best women's GC rider now that AVDB is retired. You've got the TDFF coming in. You know, the cost of winning the men's Tour de France is... Almost, it it's, doesn't even matter how much money you have. Like, Ineos have more money. Uh, but, yeah, they, they're odds on to win it. And Norsgaard maybe to pick up a stage uh, as well next year. But the – it's hard to do over. They had seven World Tour wins this year, Benji. I'm setting the line at six and a half. I'm taking the easy over. Easy. Yeah, I think so as well because easily there's more races to be won. Like, we said it every single time. We've got – that to the France farm coming up. We've got the likes of uh, Battle of the North coming up, in which, in all honesty, Katrin Allerud should be going to as well. And, like, 
all these new races coming up can offer opportunities. But then, then I'm thinking like to the Swiss, to the Romandy. With to the Romandy, I think going on to Fion 2000, another climbing stage. A team like this will have opportunities for riders like Sarah Martin at certain races. Yeah, I think like even she might get a chance to classic San Sebastian bench if AEV doesn't go this year. Like she, she's a really good domestic yeah. there. So like, yeah, she should get more opportunities. We both, I think, see Norsgaard taking some World Tour wins. We see AVV continuing to take World Tour wins and stages. And maybe Sierra picks up a couple. We'll get Gantt as well. Are, so. are the women's World Tour teams too small for the amount of World Tour races we have this year? Um, I think it's close. It's close. Romandy's kind of pushing it on the limit. And I think Giro Rose is coming back as women's it's World Tour. It's Julia, women's. Is that coming in as well? Uh, it was, I think, um, they stopped it last year for a year, and then this year they, they're doing it or something. Damn. Okay. Well, in that case, yeah, it's 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 heavy, and I think we're going to see squad sizes increasing from 14 to 20 pretty pretty soon. But that was our Movistar women's team preview. they got a lot to be excited about, and we're obviously pretty high on them for 2022 as well, given that they've got Classics, Hills, and GC covered for all races, which is you can't ask for much more. Um, so hopefully, yeah, hopefully they live up and they get they get good results. And thanks to Sebastian and Zoe for coming on the podcast. We hope you enjoyed that interview. Let us know if you did, if you do enjoy those interviews, particularly with management. Often I think management have good insights that we guess about and they can provide confirmation or their own perspectives as well. But thanks as always to listening, for listening, and we'll see you in the next one. Ciao.